Hey guys, and welcome back to another tutorial in my Making Snake and End Curses tutorial series. Um, if you have not seen the previous tutorials, uh, I recommend going to check those out first. I'll put a little card up above to that playlist. Um, also, if you're not familiar with End Curses already, I recommend having a knowledge of End Curses first. If you, if you don't, go check out my other tutorial series, which is just on general concepts of End Curses. Um, we'll be taking those concepts and applying them in these tutorials. That's kind of the purpose of this series. So I'll, again, I'll put a little card up above to, uh, to that, the playlist for that series. Um, and also if, uh, if you'd like to get these tutorials right as they come out, consider, uh, subscribing down below if you haven't already and turning on all notifications really helps out the channel and keeps me motivated to, uh, keep making these videos. But anyways, without further ado, let's get started. So. Today we're going to be doing kind of like a second pass now that we're armed with our knowledge about MVC and specifically views in this case. Uh, we're going to be taking a second pass at the board class. So uh, you'll see here we have the same um, main file from before. Um, it should look exactly the same or very similar. And uh, then we have our board class, which again should be exactly the same from our last tutorial. Right off the bat, I'm going to delete some stuff here that we don't need. Um, I kind of unnecessarily saved the height and width as private variables in this class, or sorry, private member variables in this class. That's one thing. I'm going to say function instead of method like a million times, just as a heads up. I'm going to try to say method instead of function, but we'll see. Um, <laughs> so um, we kind of don't really need to save those for later. I don't think we're ever going to use them again, so I'm just going to get rid of those right off the bat. Another thing we're going to change here with the board class is... Um, it's a good idea in the constructor to create the board win because we definitely need to make that right off the bat. But um, this box um, call and this refresh call, I think we should actually take out of the constructor because um, generally speaking, I do things like that in a method called initialize. So that way, if later on during the program or something, we need to redraw the box border or something, we just call initialize again instead of um, having to create a new board, basically. So, before we create an initialize function, first I'm going to create a couple descriptive methods that just kind of uh, take the magic out of the code that I'm writing. So, um, we're going to write a void method or a method that returns void called add border. Uh, this is going to be a very basic function that essentially just does box board win zero zero like that. Again, it just kind of takes the magic out of oh, what does box board win zero zero mean? It means we're adding a border. So board dot add border makes a lot more sense than box board win zero zero. So um, it's just a descriptive method to make the code easier to read. Basically, um, we're going to create another function called clear. Now, what this function is going to do is it's going to run the um, w clear method provided by end curses, which uh, we're going to pass it board win, and that's basically just going to clear the um, the whole window, and then whenever we clear our board we actually want to re-add the border in so we're going to make a call to add border after we cleared the board um, that basically just makes it so the inside of the board is cleared so for instance maybe there's a game over or something and we want to clear the board that's what this clear function will do and then lastly we're going to create a function called refresh now again this is a very simple function it's more descriptive but um, it's basically just going to run uh, w refresh on our board window so it's a little more clear to say board dot refresh than it is to say w refresh board win. So um, that's why we have this refresh class, or sorry, class <laughs> refresh method. Jeez, killing myself. Um, so now that we have all these things in place, we can actually create an initialize method. Um, and what this initialize method is going to do is it's going to first run clear. So when we initialize our board, we want to make sure it's cleared, and then we that clear function automatically adds our border, which we want. And then we are going to run a refresh call like that. So now we've essentially recreated um, what we already created here. And inside the constructor, I'm just going to add um, this initialize method like that. So when we first create our board, we want to make sure we initialize it. Ooh, there we go. We want to make sure we initialize it. Am I spelling that wrong? Oh, it's because I, oh, wow, I misspelled this, initialize. Oof, one too many eyes, or one too few eyes. Um, so there we go. Now, if we uh, go to our terminal here, um, and we make and run it, let me just do it clear, 
uh, make and run our main function, you'll see that we get the exact same result that we were getting before. But now the code is just a little bit more descriptive. Um, I might even go a step further um, so that our main is a little more descriptive and just add or dot initialize here. So again, we'll we'll kind of achieve the same result. It's kind of semantics at this point, you know, what whether you put it in the con constructor or not. But um, that's kind of the idea here. We want to make sure we write code that it makes sense. Uh, it's not just a bunch of code that people can't understand. Uh, to that end, you should probably add comments. I'm not going to just for the just to keep these tutorials a little shorter if I can. Um, all right, so now um, that we've got that all set up, uh, there's a couple things that we should do because this is we're trying to make this board basically one of our views. So what does a view do? It a view displays information to the user, and it takes input and passes it back to the controller. So in order to display that information, we need to come up with an interface to display information. So uh, just to keep things kind of organized in a logical manner, um, I'm going to add a fun or a method here called add at, and I'm going to put it right after add border, so that you know add add kind of thing. And our add at function is going to take uh, three parameters. It's going to take a y value, it's going to take an x value, and it's going to take a char type value. Um, and what it's going to do with these is it's going to actually display them to our board win. So we'll uh, create another front or we'll call the built-in uh, anchorses function move w add char with board win as the first parameter, y x as the second and third parameter, and then char as the final parameter. And uh, again, it's just a descriptive method. Board dot add at makes a lot more sense than move w add char board win y x char. Um, it just takes the magic out of it um, and makes it a little bit more descriptive. So uh, now that we have that, we also need to create a function. Sorry, again, I'm going to say function a million times. We need to create a method um, called get input, which is going to get input from the user. Actually, we're going to have it return char type. Um, so we'll do a function called get input. And this is just going to return w get char for our board win. Um, so the nice thing about this get input is it basically gives us a refresh for free. So um, if we're during the um, process of our game, uh, every time we get input, it's going to run that refresh for us, which makes a lot of sense when we get to the game loop, which, spoiler alert, that's going to be the next tutorial is we're going to actually um, talk about the main game loop and how that's going to work. But uh, for now, we'll just we're just building on this board class. So now that we have all these functions in place, um, I can kind of show you what they do over here in our main class. So um, now that we've created the board and we've initialized it and we just want to add a character to it, um, we can do board add at and then I don't know what we're going to pick a variable or pick a number. Um, let's go five five and we'll put the asterisk key like that. Sorry, asterisk. No, uh, hash key hash key, pound symbol, whatever you want to call it. Um, and after that, we're going to have to call a refresh because otherwise we won't be able to actually see what we've drawn. Um, but yeah, with that all in place, let's go back and make and run that code. And you'll see, voila, we've added a character at 5.5. Five, just to verify that's one. I guess it includes the border. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Actually, no. Oh yeah, it, it, yeah, it does include the border because it's indexed from zero. So it would be one, two, three, four, five, six. So technically it's six down, and then it's one, two, three, four, five, six over. Um, so yeah, um, now that we've kind of, this is essentially the idea behind a view. It doesn't necessarily know anything about what it's displaying. It doesn't have to know anything about what it's displaying. It just has to be able to, to display it. Um, so it shouldn't handle any sort of business logic or um, complex like if statements or anything like that. It just handles displaying information. Um, so anyways, uh, I hope you guys liked this tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up below. Uh, if you had any questions or just general comments, feel free to leave them below. I, I respond to almost everything. Uh, and uh, Look forward to the next tutorial where we'll be talking about the, the game loop and creating our, our main game controller class, or at least beginning of it, because it's going to 
definitely that that class is going to evolve a lot as we move along with this tutorial series but yeah i hope you guys really like this tutorial and uh, i'll see you guys in the next one hope you're having a great day